In this episode of Be Hooked Crochet, we're going to run through the entire pattern for the baby shower gift set. This is a free pattern that's available at BeHookedCrochet.com slash baby shower gift. You can find the supplies list there as well as the written instructions for each of the components we're going to cover in the tutorial. Well, I'm your host, Brittany, and I'm really excited about this new project. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to begin our baby shower gift set with the easiest part. So this is going to be the little strap for our binky or our pacifier. And what we want to do is take color A and we're going to create a slip knot. We'll just insert that loop and put it right on our hook. So we're going to begin from here. This loop that we just placed on our hook does not count as our first chain. We're going to just yarn over and pull through and that will be our first chain. We need to have a total of 56 chains to start our strap. Then once we have our 56 chains, we're ready to start on our first row. The most challenging part of this entire project is going to be learning how to see your stitches with the fuzzy yarn. To start the second row, we're going to find our second chain from the hook. So a lot of this is going to be guesswork. You're just going to guess where the chains are. That's the brutal, honest truth. But there is a little bit of strategy involved too. I'm holding the chain facing forward and if you look really close, you can see a V. Now that is the first chain from the hook. And then if I slide down, I can kind of see another V right there. So that is the second chain from the hook. And I want to insert my hook into that chain. Now I will typically just catch that top loop when I'm working with fuzzy yarn like this. And we're going to single crochet. The stitch pattern for this section, for the strap, is really easy. We're only going to be working with single crochets, and that's what we want to do for the entire first row, is just make one single crochet into every chain. Now, as I said, the difficult part is going to be seeing your chains. So we're just going to locate our next chain, which you can see the V pretty clearly right there. And you'll single crochet into that. And as long as you keep your chain pointing forward or so the top part is facing you, then you really can see the V's. And you'll just insert your hook into the chain and single crochet. So my biggest tip here with working with fuzzy yarn is to put yourself in a really good lighting situation. So here I have quite a bit of light on my project and that not only helps the camera to show you what I'm working on, but in this case, it also really helps me to be able to see my stitches. And anytime I work with a fuzzy or novelty yarn, I try to do this as much as I can, either working in direct sunlight, so taking it outside, or working under a crafting lamp works really well. Even if you don't have a crafting lamp, you can just you know, whatever lamp or whatever lighting source that you have and you can get really close to, that's gonna help you to see your stitches. Now, as I mentioned before, we're just working one single crochet into every chain until we've reached the end. Now, once you've finished up your first row, we're going to chain one and turn our work. And this is going to start row two. Now, I will mention here that row two and row three are exactly the same. So we're going to cover row two here, and then I'll set you free to finish up row three before we meet back up to finish off our pacifier strap. So what we want to do first is find our first stitch. 
Now, when I'm working with fuzzy yarn, I like to look at the project from the side rather than to try to find the V's at the top. What really helps is if you can take your fingers and just sort of pull things apart. Now you can see that that sort of opens up a little hole right there, and that is my first stitch. I just wanna insert my hook there and single crochet, and then move on to the next. Now when you're working with a light yarn like this, it's a little bit more difficult to see, but like I said, that lighting is really going to help. So you can locate your first stitch here, and then you'll know that the next stitch isn't too far from that, right? We just need to go over a tiny bit. Well, if you look over there, you can see a little indention or a little hole there. So that is the second stitch. And again, you can sort of pull things apart and peek around. You can kind of see my finger in the background there. That is my second stitch. So I want to insert my hook into the second stitch and then just keep going from there. See that next indention? Then I'm going to single crochet there. So we're just working with single crochets as we're getting used to this fuzzy yarn. Now you'll just work this until the end of your row Once you've made it to the end of your row, you'll want to just double check your stitch count because if you if you don't have the right number of stitches, then you're going to have sort of a wobbly edge like this. So I have one more stitch remaining in my second row. I'm just gonna finish my single crochet there. And you'll have a total of 55 stitches at the end of your row. Now moving on to row three, we're going to chain one and turn our work and we're just repeating row two. We're going to make one single crochet into every stitch. Once you've made it to the end of row three, we can go ahead and fasten off. So you'll just leave yourself a tail that's a few inches and we're going to use this to sew it together. So you'll just trim that tail, pull the loop, or pull the tail through the loop on your hook. And then you'll need to grab your pacifier and the clip. Let's demonstrate the assembly now. For this step we're going to need a few supplies. We're going to use our pacifier and this is a Dritz brand suspender clip. So that's what I use. You can get these at your local craft store or you can order them on Amazon. I'll have a link for the supplies at BeHookedCrochet.com so you can check out that link to order your supplies. And we also will need a tapestry needle. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the longer of the two tails and we'll sew this into the pacifier first. Now, if your pacifier has a certain direction to it, like this one is, you know, it could go either way. Um, but if yours does have a direction to it, you'll just make sure that you have the bottom of the pacifier is going to be facing this way. And that's just gonna make sure you don't have your seam showing. So we'll deal with this other tail in just a bit. So I'm just going to wrap it around about a half an inch. So I'm gonna give myself a little bit of clearance and I'm just going to work this into the strap. You know, coming back out the other side and then work it back through and make sure I catch the edge there. And you'll want to work this back and forth a few times. That way we know it's secure. The other thing I like to do is when I get to the edge is I will just sort of whip stitch the edge to close up any gap that might be there. 
and then continue to work back. And then again, when I'm on this edge, I'm just going to seal it up with a whip stitch. Then once you have it nice and secure, you can just weave in this end along the back side. Then once you finish that first end, then I'm just going to take the remaining tail and you can either secure it a little bit more by stitching or you can simply weave it in along the back side here. Now the last thing we need to do is sew the other end to the clip here and we want to make sure we have the direction the same because you can see this seam on the bottom side so I'm just going to make sure that they match on both sides. And then take your darning needle with a scrap piece of yarn and start sewing it on just like before. You'll just start at one edge and you'll just continue stitching like before, just working back and forth and you'll want to make sure you have it nice and secure. So go over it a couple of times Now when you get back around to the other side, I would recommend tying it off with your starting tail. Now just make a knot there and then we won't trim it, but we'll go ahead and weave in these ends like before. But this knot is just going to help us to secure things and make sure it's not going to come undone. And since we're using this fuzzy yarn, we're really not going to see the knot. So you'll just weave in these two ends and that will complete the pacifier strap. Now for the wipes cover, we're going to be working in the same pattern that we did for the strap. So we're just going to use single crochets here. We're going to start off by creating a slip knot. Place that loop on your hook. And then we're going to chain 45. Once you have your 45 chains, we're going to locate the second chain from the hook and single crochet there. So once again, you can see that first chain or that first V. We're going to work in the one right below it. And single crochet. And we're going to make one single crochet in every chain. So this is familiar with what we just did a moment ago. And we have a very simple stitch pattern repeat. So go ahead and single crochet into every chain till you get to your slip knot and then we'll talk about the next rows. Once you get to the end of your row, you'll have a total of 44 stitches and we're ready to move on to row number two and row number two is going to be the pattern repeat for the entire piece. It's really simple. We're just going to chain one and turn our work. And we'll find our first stitch, which you can see that little hole right there. I tend to like to look for my stitches at the side of the work, like I mentioned earlier on. And we'll single crochet there. And then I'll just find that next little indention. Put my hook in there. Single crochet. And this is all we're going to do. We're just going to single crochet into every stitch for every single row until our piece measures approximately 14 inches long. So you'll have a total of 44 stitches for every row. You're just going to work them all the same. Work one single crochet into every stitch when you get to the end of your row, you'll chain one and turn your work and start over. So that's what I need you to do at this point.
finish crocheting your wipes cover until it measures approximately 14 inches from our bottom edge here all the way up. Once your piece measures about 14 inches, then we can go ahead and fasten off. And then you'll pull the tail through the loop on your hook. And the next thing we're going to do is stitch it up the sides. The first thing that we need to do is fold it so that it's going to work for these wipes. So a lot of times the wipes will have like a little door opening and that's where you can pull the wipes from. So we don't really want the join to be right in the middle because we wanna be able to access them as well. So what I have done here is I have folded over one side and this measures about two and a half inches and then you'll fold the other side over so this measures about five inches. And then once you have that situated, you'll take another piece of yarn and just go ahead and create a slip knot. So you'll just find the place that's closest to the corner where you can work your stitch just underneath one of those stitches on the top and then a stitch on the bottom and place the slip knot on your hook, pull it through, and chain one. So we're not counting that chain one as a stitch, we're really just using it to fasten on our new yarn. So I'm going to make a single crochet in the same place. And then you're just going to proceed by making one single crochet in the side of every single row. Now there may be a lot of guesswork involved in this part here because it's a little bit more difficult for us to see our rows. The number of stitches that you put here really isn't the important part. What's important is that the stitches are close enough together that you don't have any holes. When you get to the point where you have three sections to work over, so right where this overlap happens with the bottom section, we're just going to be working in all three of those layers, just like we have been for the other two. So just work your hook under the first one, and then find the row in the next layer, and then onto the back layer. So then you've caught three layers, and you'll work your single crochet. So there's really just a small section where you have to work through three layers. Then we're back down to two. We'll just make a single crochet into those last few rows here. Now once you're finished with that, you can go ahead and trim your yarn, pull the tail through the loop on your hook, and we'll just simply weave those in and now rotate your work in this direction. So we're just rotating it around this way and we're going to fasten on at this corner and work all the way across just like we just demonstrated. So I'm going to do that off camera. We'll meet back up in just a moment. 
Once we have the other side crocheted up, I'm just going to start weaving in my ends. So you'll just take your darning needle. I'm going to work it in along the back side and just follow my line of stitches that I used to stitch the sides together. So just work under a few stitches in one direction. And then you can reverse and work back. And you can do that as many times as you would like. Usually two or three times is good. Trim that off and then just move on to the rest. Moving on to the bottle cover, we're going to be using color B and we're going to create a slip knot. And we're going to chain two. So this pattern is going to be worked from the bottom up and we're gonna crochet in the round. We're gonna set up our round by finding the first chain that we created. We're gonna make six single crochets there. So go ahead and make your first single crochet. And after you've completed that, you're going to wanna to have some kind of stitch marker. So you can use a stitch marker or you can put a scrap piece of yarn in there or a bobby pin. This is gonna make it easier for us to find that first stitch. So we'll move on to just make five more single crochets in the same chain. Once you have your six stitches, then I would recommend leaving your stitch marker in place if you can and insert your hook into that stitch before removing it. So we're not going to join with a slip stitch at the end of every round. It's a little bit easier if we can just continue to work in a spiral. So I'm going to make my first single crochet of round two and place a stitch marker there. So for round two, we need to increase for every single stitch. So that means we're going to make two single crochets in every stitch. And we're gonna have a total of 12 stitches at the end of this round. When you come all the way around, you've made it to your stitch marker, you'll insert your hook into the stitch with the marker before removing it. And for round three, we're going to increase every other stitch. So we're gonna start off by making just one single crochet in the first stitch. And place your stitch marker there. And then we'll work two single crochets in the next and then one single crochet, and then two. So that's our repeat. We're gonna have a total of 18 stitches at the end of round three. At the end of round three, your 17th and 18th stitch should all be in the last stitch. So since we started off with one in the first stitch, and then we did two and one and two. So that pattern will work itself all the way around so that the last stitch has two stitches in it. And then I'm going to insert my hook in that first stitch. Make my first single crochet of round four and place the marker. So for round four, our repeat is going to be one single crochet, one single crochet, two single crochets. So we're increasing every third stitch. All 
Also, at the end of round four, we'll have a total of 24 stitches. So you're just going to work that repeat until we get all the way back around. Your last stitch, again, will have two single crochets in it, and we'll meet back up at the end of this round. Now at the end of round four, I'm just going to work my single crochet, my first single crochet of round five, where that stitch marker is. Now this round, we're going to increase every fourth stitch. So I have my first single crochet, I'm gonna work my second, so one single crochet in the next, and one single crochet in the next. So we have three that are by themselves, and then we work two single crochets in the next. Once again, that's one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet, and two. Now at the end of round five, we'll have a total of 30 stitches, and we'll meet back up at the end. At the end of round five, you will end with two single crochets in your last stitch there. Once again, we have a total of 30 stitches, and now the increases are done. So we've finished up the hard part, and now we're just gonna move on to a repeat. So we're going to begin the next round with a single crochet. And you'll want to mark this first stitch again. And this time we're gonna make one single crochet into every stitch. So this is a really simple repeat. You'll want to count your stitches as you go just to make sure you're not missing any stitches. We'll have 30. And this is actually the repeat for rounds six through 14. So rounds six through 14 are going to be one single crochet into every stitch and you'll want to carry your stitch marker just like we've been doing. That way it can help you keep track and count your rounds. A row counter might also be helpful for you in this situation since we can't really see the rows as easily as we can with a smooth yarn. So what I would like for you to do at this point is finish crocheting rounds six through 14, just like I'm demonstrating here, one single crochet in every round and we'll meet back up at the end of round 14 and we're going to transition to another color and a really cool stitch. So at the end of round 14, your work should look something like this. And there's just a couple more steps that we need to do in order to switch over to the next color. So what we have here is a little bit of a jog. Or there's a difference in height because we're working in a spiral. So we're going to correct that a little bit by making a slip stitch in the next stitch. So just slip stitch. And then we can go ahead and slip stitch one more time in the next stitch. And so that sort of forces the stitches downward a little bit, makes that jog a little less obvious. And we can fasten off. Just pull the tail through the loop on your hook. Next, we're going to take color C, create a slip knot. And we can fasten on it anywhere really, but I like to go ahead and fasten on in the stitch that's right next to where I fastened off. Just pull that slip knot through the stitch. And then we really want to just pull up on this, give it a little bit of room. We're gonna work in a puff stitch. So for this puff stitch, we're going to wrap the yarn, insert the hook into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then just kind of pull that up real tight. So we have three loops on our hook now. Yarn over, insert into the same stitch, pull up, and we have five loops on our hook. We're gonna do this one more time. When we have seven loops on our hook, we can yarn over and pull through all seven. We'll make a chain one to finish things off. 
And that's how you do the puff stitch. We're going to be working with that stitch for the next several rounds. And we're going to skip the next stitch. So you see the next stitch right here. We're skipping that. We're going to puff stitch into the next. We'll skip the next stitch here, work a puff stitch into the next. And that's our repeat. We're just going to repeat that until we get to the end of our round. So when you get to the end of your round, you should have a total of 15 puff stitches. And we're going to find the first puff stitch and we'll join with the slip stitch there. So it's a little bit difficult to see where you're going to join, but it's actually where that chain space was created. If you kind of pull on it, you can see a little bit of a hole there. That's where you're going to stick your hook into and join with a slip stitch there. So the repeat for the next four rounds is going to be the same. We're going to find our first space in between these next two puff stitches. And we're going to slip stitch there. That's because we want to have our puff stitches in between each other. So we're not going to put the puff stitches on top. So we just need to shift our stitches over by one. So from there, we're going to just pull up on our hook and start working the first puff stitch. Then we'll jump in between the next two puff stitches and work a puff stitch there. And that's the repeat. We'll find the next two, work a puff stitch in between. When you get to the end of your round, you will have a total of 15 puff stitches once again. You'll join with the slip stitch here to your first stitch. And when you start the next round, don't forget to slip stitch in between these first two. That way you can shift your stitches over by one. We're gonna have a total of five puff stitch rounds. So that's including this first one here. So go ahead and finish that up. We'll meet back up. Once you have a total of five puff stitch rounds, we just have a little bit left to finish off our bottle covers. Once we're finished with our fifth round of puff stitches, our bottle cover now looks something like this. And we can fasten off color C. The next thing we want to do is grab color A and we'll create a slip knot. And you'll start by placing your hook in any of the puff stitches. So I'm just going to put my hook in the last puff stitch there, the one where I fastened off. Place the new yarn on your hook, pull it through, and make a chain just to fasten things on. So we're not going to count that as our first stitch. What we want to do is make a single crochet in the same space. Now that will be our first stitch. And we're going to work in the spiral again. So I'm going to use a stitch marker to help me know where that first stitch is. So what we want to do for this first round is make one single crochet in between every puff stitch and one single cro crochet in every puff stitch. So we will just single crochet in that next space and single crochet in the puff stitch. In between and in the next stitch. And we'll just repeat that until we get to the end of the round.
When we've made it to the end of the round, we'll make our single crochet, our very last one, in the space in between the first and the last puff stitch. And from here, we're not going to join. We're going to continue working in a spiral for the next five rounds. We want to make one single crochet into every stitch. And so that's what I need you to do at this point. Go ahead and finish crocheting five more rounds of single crochet where we just do one single crochet in every stitch. And we'll meet back up at the end of that. We'll have one final round to complete our bottle covers. Once we have a total of six rounds of color A, we're just going to remove our stitch marker and once again, we need to correct this jog. Since we are working in this in a spiral, we have a round that's sitting higher than the other. So we're going to do that by slip stitching into the next two stitches. And now for the last round, we're going to do a round of reverse single crochet. This is just sort of a little bit of a bumpy or fancy edging. We're going to do that by chaining one. And we're going to work in the reverse, just as the name implies. So you might find that this stitch is a little bit difficult to work your hook into, but you know, it has a really great result, so it's worth the effort. You're just going to work your hook behind and into that next stitch. Then you'll yarn over, pull up a loop, and then you have two loops on your hook. You'll yarn over and pull through two. And that's going to finish the first reverse single crochet. Now you'll just do the same for the next stitch over. And then just continue all the way around. Once you've made it all the way around, you can go ahead and join with a slip stitch with the first stitch. And again, I'm doing this in the reverse motion here. It is a little bit more difficult to work than your regular slip stitch. And once you finish that, you can trim your tail, pull that through the loop on your hook, Weave in your ends and your bottle cover is all done. That wraps up our tutorial today on the baby shower gift set. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can direct them at behookedcrochet.com slash baby shower gift. Just scroll down to the bottom of that page and you'll see a comment section and you can ask your question there. On behalf of BeHookedCrochet.com, I'm your host, Brittany, and I look forward to serving you in the next episode of BeHookedCrochet. Bye for now.